Oh, this didn't turn out at all like I expected. <laughs> It didn't turn out for the better. It turned out to be a teachable moment for me and hopefully for you too. So I thought, eh, I'm gonna go ahead and give this week off, take a week off from the whole learning um, the cast video series and just do something for me, right? Do something for me. And I've been wanting for a while to do an experiment using uh, open face casting molds and closed molds, right? So an open face mold is where you basically pour the pour the metal in and on the surface and just let it fill. Kind of like these guys are doing with, you know, make, <laughs> making swords, right? Closed mold is when you've got molds closed together and you're, you're pouring inside that system and, and the metal's contained both top and bottom. I thought, you know, it'd be kind of fun to to just test it and see how how they how they compare. And I thought, well, while you're at it. You know, I, I could do a face down and a face up because I've always been told if you want to cast any detail, you make sure you, you cast it face down. And that has kind of precluded me from casting things like plaques up in the coat because it's just nigh impossible to, to turn it upside down and get it out of there. Unless I do backwards drafting and, you know. So I thought, oh, I'm going to give that a shot. So... Let me just, let's just show you. Let's just show you what happened. All right, so we're gonna start off with the part in the drag. This is going to be the face down part. All of these things are gonna get exactly the same treatment, right? The same parting compound. We're gonna riddle the sand on the same way. Uh, we're going to ram the sand, the, <laughs> ram the sand, ram the, ram the sand the same way. <laughs> Go ahead and start putting the uh, face up part in the cope. Uh, if I can just figure out how to get this runner and stuff placed on here like I want it. And get all of our little extra pieces in there as well. The uh, spin trap, the sprue, get that in there and we'll start parting it up. And we'll get, well, we're gonna riddle the sand the same way, ram it up the same way. And finally, the open mold. This will be the same thing, right? You're going to just do it, what would be a face down in the, in the other mold, but uh, going to go ahead and get it parted out, parted to compound, riddle the sand, ram the sand. And we should be good to go. I'll go ahead and get these parts out of the, uh, the patterns out of the sand, and we'll go ahead and uh, get them poured. Here's the pour. First pour, what I would normally do, pour into the pouring basin, making sure that we're close, making sure we keep the sprue nice and full. Uh, it fills pretty darn quick. Now this one, I have no experience in this, and I am a complete noob <laughs> when it comes to this. You'll see that the uh, surface tension of the metal uh, doesn't fill the corners in, so I'll just throw some more metal on there, I guess. I don't know. And I wish they were all. I wish they were all this easy to get out of the mold. This was a don't just drop it out of there. All right, we'll get the other parts out of the uh, molds here and get them cleaned up, or not cleaned up. But we'll get them out of the mold and show them to you. Okay, so I've just taken them out of the uh, the sand. I've washed them off with some water, and that's all I've done so far. Here's the one that we poured open face. I don't think there's any trouble recognizing it. <laughs> and before I cut these off, I thought I would go ahead and label them. So this is the way I poured it, pouring basin, sprue, runner. This one was face down, okay? This one was the one I did in the cope, face up. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these off and we're gonna come back and we're gonna look at them up close. All right, so I've laid them out here in order. This one is up, down, open. So we have face up. face down and we have open now here's what I found fascinating first of all this guy face up I did not expect the detail I got out of face up you can see 
all the stars came out. In fact, a lot of them have their tiny little points on them. Uh, I'm pretty amazed. I expected to see, uh, you know, the stripes not filling in. Everything filled in just like it was supposed to. That was my first shock. This one turned out, face down turned out pretty much exactly like I expected, right? Nice clean lines, nice good finish. Um, de detail on all the stars. Okay. This guy also turned out, in one way turned out, is that it's exactly like I would expect. Don't have any detail on the stars. In fact, it didn't even really fill the stars. Um, it's interesting to note the shape of the stripes. They're curved. These are hard, sharp edges, and these are rounded. Um, very smooth. First thing that I noticed. Okay, this one, that was the first expected thing. The fate that the open mold would not fill as well. Now, here's what's really unexpected to me. The finish on this is beautiful. If, I mean, it is so much, it feels so much smoother than these guys. It's, it's really got a nice finish to it. So let's go to paper. I'm going to tell you, I had a conversation with Professor Campbell just a week, a little over a week ago about this very topic. And I'm shocked to have it turn out this way. So let me go to get some paper and we'll talk about it. Oh, the things I do for you. You see the direction this paper is? It should be this way for me to write on. <laughs> okay, so here's what I want. I want to talk about head pressure. Face up. You know, we a lot of people talk about head pressure and we need head pressure on our molds. <laughs> okay. You saw how high my cope was above this part, right? I mean, this tall, probably about that. When you talk about the height of my basin ridge to where this part is, we're probably talking somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 to 60 millimeters tops. Look what happened when it, with that much pressure in the mold. Remember, this was face up, okay? That metal had to push up against that mold and fill it to give that detail. You can see, you can see, I can't breathe, I'm burping. <laughs> you can see the grains of the sand in here. You can see points on the stars. Great detail from that height, okay? What does that mean for about something like this? Do I need to sit this on top of my mold and increase the head pressure? My answer would be probably in most cases, no. Certainly for the stuff like th that we do here in the home, that's tiny, that's not a big deal. I don't know that, I, I, I don't get it. I don't see the reason for that. And here's a conversation I've mentioned earlier, a conversation with Professor Campbell. I asked him last week because I was thinking about actually talking about head pressure last week and I didn't get it, I didn't get there. If you consider the surface wall of our mold, right? This would be, let's just say the, I'm looking at it from the top, the metal's gonna come in this direction, okay? Now we think of that surface wall as being pretty smooth. The reality is it's shaped like sand, right? So it's, it's probably shaped like this. When that metal is coming in, it's flowing in and it's forming an oxide layer on that, on that leading edge. That happens almost immediate. I mean, like instantaneously. As soon as that molten metal gets exposed to air, it starts forming an oxide layer. So now we've got this layer, oxide layer coming up and it's fitting against there. And it almost acts like, and I'm gonna use Professor Campbell's words, like a sheet of steel across that sand, giving us a clean, smooth finish. Hence, this guy that had zero pressure, right? Zero pressure. It is, I can't tell you how smooth that feels. It is great, 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 great surface, horrible definition. And that's because we didn't have any pressure pushing against the sand. Now, if we have that same, whoop, I don't wanna draw that like that. Let's just straight line. We have that same sandy finish right here, right? and I'm pushing the metal in, I'm pushing it in, and I've got head pressure like this sitting there, what's gonna happen to that metal? 
that metal is going to take on every single detail that's in that sand and quite possibly, quite possibly give us a worse finish when what we're trying to do with head pressure, what we think we're doing with head pressure, is getting a better finish. This is a perfect example of that. No head pressure, incredibly smooth finish, terrible detail. Here we have a good finish. This is the finish on my sand. This was the face up. Let me show you the good one, face down. Right, it's got great definition on it. Stars are a bit, look like stars, um, and they're tiny. <laughs> how tiny they are. But the lines are nice, crisp, and sharp. The surface of the sand is good, um, even on the backside. And here's the other. <laughs> if this doesn't tell you why I don't do open face, that I, <laughs> look at that. I could, I obviously I don't know what I'm doing there, but this was remarkable to me. All righty, well, <laughs> there you go. I hope you learned something. I, uh, I feel like I learned something. Uh, it was educational to me to see, A, the definition I could get on that mold face up in the, in the, uh, in the mold. Uh, amazing to me. It doesn't take a ton of pressure to get that to fill in. Uh, and it was also kind of remarkable to see this guy, the, the open face one, and to see what Professor Campbell had told me actually just come to life. Uh, that is a remarkable finish with no, with no detail. I've said it a couple of times now. I know that for me, I think these are good for holding bacon grease. <laughs> I don't think you need them on your mold. I don't think you need them. So that's it. Uh, hopefully we learned something today. You guys have a great day.